This is a big knife. Spyderco Resilience, lightweight. I actually prefer this one. I love the Volcano Grip and the FRN handle right here. Really big knife, actually. It's over a 4-inch blade. That's big. Here's a bigger knife. Cold Steel Espada G10, large. Huge. 5.5-inch blade, I believe, on this guy right here. That's massive. Well, I've had a lot of big knives. I've had a lot of big XL Cold Steels, but... Officially, this is the largest, not only largest cold steel, but the largest folding knife I've ever had. Period. Say hello to the cold steel Espada XL. I can just barely get this in frame. Yikes. That is <laughs> massive. Absolutely massive, massive folder. Again, this is huge. This is a huge knife. It's funny, when you make knives bigger and bigger and bigger and you keep handling them, and eventually the knives that you thought were big feel small to you. After wielding, manipulating, and carrying this thing, this knife feels like a small, compact little knife to me. This XL, this large Espada, sorry. Again, this is most of Cold Steel's XL size knives, or this one right here. With the Espada series, it's the one current exception. This is the large, this is the extra large, the 7.5 inch blade on there. 7.5 inches. The blade itself is the length of some folding knives. It's almost the length of, here, I think I have one. At the stable here, let's see what we got. Schrade SCH A3 CB, yeah. Look at that, it's pretty much spot on. The blade itself is the entire length of this folding knife. Yikes, it's a massive, massive kick-ass folder. I love this thing. Very. I have a lot to say about it. There are uses for it. It's not useless. It's not a gimmick. It's not a joke. It's not a toy. It absolutely is a fully functional folding knife. That being said, it's, it's just... It's absolutely ridiculous. It's huge. Again, these are already huge. These XL-sized cold steel folders at the 5.5 inch, like 4 inches is already kind of large for some people as far as a blade length is concerned. 5.5 inches is like, okay, you can you can stop now, that, that's massive. And then we got a 7.5 inch. Yep, just fold 2 inches longer. I can hold this folding knife with two whole large size hands here, two. Check, check that out, there's still room to spare. It's literally like a mini sword. It, it outweighs, it out... Lengths. It's larger than large fixed blades out there on some of them. This is it's it's huge, ridiculous, massive. You can barely even if it can't even fit it in frame in some cases. If I do that, there, there you go. Almost. <laughs> it's just it's funny. I knew it was a big knife, and when I finally pulled the trigger on it and it came in, I, I was still impressed. I was like that's even bigger than I thought. And no, it's not just longer than the large spot. It's actually wider too. If you look closely there, look at the blade, it's, it's, yeah, that's pretty impressive. We're going to get into what is useful about this knife. Yeah, it has uses. It's not useless. That's another thing that's cool about it. It's not a joke knife or anything. It actually has a fully usable edge. Super strong locking mechanism. It's got that telltale cold steel triad lock. We have actually, it actually can be carried. Believe it or not, you can fit this in your pocket, at least I can anyway. I'm five foot nine. The pants are, I think I wear like 30 inch pants. I can't even remember, something like that. But this fits in cargo pants just fine, just barely. Just barely fits in cargo pants. On some pants, it kind of bends a little bit depending on the pocket size. If you're a woman, don't even bother. If you wear female pants anyway, this is you can barely fit chapstick in those things. Good luck. Uh, this is not going to carry well for you. But it is a carryable EDC folding knife just barely if you push this anymore if you put the pocket clip any higher you make the knife any longer there's no way you'd probably be able to carry it so for it's it's really pushing the limits of a carryable folding knife you can't really get much bigger than this and have it comfortably carry and all that being said it is a functional strong razor ass sharp knife the blade is that's very intimidating. Again, some fixed blade. This is a this is large for a fixed blade, but it's a folder. It's gonna dwarf most fixed blades. It's absolutely it's it's like a little sword. It almost is a sword-sized knife. It, it's crazy. 
I can't stress that enough. Again, the XL folding holds it. These are already huge. These are already ridiculous, but it feels so much smaller and I can manipulate it so much easier and quicker. It's so, it feels like such a compact little folder after feeling the XL Espada. I believe this is the largest folding knife Cold Steel has ever made. It's probably the largest, probably the best folding knife for this size in the world. And I say that with full confidence because, first of all, no companies are really making knives at this size either. Most folding knife companies are not. It's very hard to find them. There's the Kershaw Strata XL. Again, Spyderco Resilience is pretty close. Again, above a 4-inch blade. That's a, that's a big knife already. But this is, it dwarfs all of them. It puts them all to shame as far as size is concerned. It's, it's ridiculous. Uh... There's probably some cheap, crappy companies out there that do make knives this size that are folding. If you dig around, you can probably find them, but I doubt their quality is anywhere near this because we do have a very solid quality, good quality knife right here, especially for the money, too. Let's get into the specs. Blade length, 7.5 inches, as I said. 9.25 inch handle length, making the overall length 16.75 inches, just under 17 it's well over a foot long, obviously. Retails currently at $299.99, but you can get these for about $160. Cheapest I've seen these were on Amazon for, I think, $138. For, it was on a special sale, but that, that you, if you really want this knife, run and take it if you see that deal. That's a really good price. But generally speaking, you're going to pay maybe like $150 for this, and that's totally worth it if you want it. AUS 10A blade steel. Made in Taiwan. It is a stone wash finish. Beautiful stone wash thumb plate up there. Again, triad lock. We have these two mini steel liners that just kind of rest up here within the locking mechanism. They don't stay within the entire handle. They're just up there. Which is also, again, what all the Espadas do. FRN or possibly an aluminum backspacer right here that is aligned along the entire knife, the entire spine, aside from the lock bar. And I do like how they jimp the liners up here. doesn't really do very much because your thumb just kind of slides. It, it, it's okay for traction. Does it really matter for a knife this size? Not really. Actually, not at all, probably, but it's still cool that it's there. It is comfortable. We have a full grip you can hold on to right here. I like these two big old choils right here. fits the human hand pretty well. Again, large size hands. But even from looking at it, even if you have massive big old hands, it'll probably just fit that too. If you have smaller hands, they'll probably rest around here, which will still be pre pretty comfortable. The second grip, I'll say, or the choke up grip, or the precision grip is going to be right here. You can put your index finger along the bolster area and your thumb along the plate. If you're trying to do some shaving or precision work with this beast, you can do that. You can scooch it all the way down here. If you want absolute maximum reach, that, that's an insane amount of reach. Again, it's like a little sword. It, it pretty much is the size of most machetes at this point when you hold it this way. That's insane. You can kind of grip it up here, too, if you want, or go into a middle grip around here. So there's a lot of different positions. That's conventional grip. We have a choke-up grip, and then we have our, let's call it the battle grip or the maximum reach grip. It does not feel like it's going to get knocked out of my hand very easily, even all the way down here. Again, you can see it kind of wrap around. Comfortable in a lot of different positions. You can hold it with two hands if for some reason you wanted to do that. It'll thrust through like a big old massive guard right here. I like this blade shape. On oh, all the Espadas, a nice, sexy up sweep right there. A nice clip blade. Good for piercing, good for slashing, chopping. It's going to be good for a rocking, cutting motion if you had to do food prep or something like this. AUS 10A, I've talked about that many, many times. It's a lot like AUS 8A, but it's got more carbon in it. So I'm going to argue it's a little better. A little sharper, we'll retain an edge a little more. It'll be slightly more prone to rusting and corrosion, maybe, but, you know, take care of your knife. You'll be okay if you oil it up, especially with the stone wash finish. That'll help, too, because it's a lot more smooth. It's just harder for creepy crawlies and such to get in there and oxidize it, mess with it, etc. I like this pocket clip, actually. So, carrying it, the grip is actually... Uh, it's grippy, but it, it's about, like, the same grip as you'd get on, like, a typical G10 knife, like a Spyderco Tenacious or something. It On the Espadas, surprisingly, the grip on the G10 is not quite as grippy as some other knives. Like, the Holdout, the Talwar, the Recon One, the Lawman, the AK-47. All these other knives use their G10 on. Their G10 patterns are usually much, much, much more aggressive. This is just, like, semi-aggressive. It's, like, it's, it's, it's grippy, you know, but it's not, like really, really, like, tearing up your skin grippy, like, on some of them. So it's it's actually on the softer side as far as G10 is concerned in comparison to their other knives. But it, it's, you know, it provides just enough traction. 
and this pocket clip, it's actually it actually carries really well. It doesn't get really stuck in your pocket. I like this pocket clip. The only other knife I know that they put this on was the Raja 2. And again, if we compare this to the Espada Large, they use their typical stubby clip that they put on a lot of their knives. Their Voyagers, even their XL Voyager uses a lot of their knives use this pocket clip right here, which I'm not wild about. I don't love it. Don't hate it either. But this clip, I'm glad they did not resort to the stubby one because there's, there's no way. I'm glad they actually use this big old pocket clip. Again, if you're familiar with the Raja 2, same exact pocket clip on there. And they have it pretty low. So you're going to see something big in there. If you're carrying this, you can definitely see that's a knife. Uh, it, it looks like a big knife. It's not hiding anything. This knife is full force, no limits. You got nothing to hide. I'm carrying a massive folder. Deal with it. That's what this knife screams to me. And it's funny, because in my state, Colorado, this is totally legal to open carry. I think the law is you can't conceal carry a knife with a blade above 3.5 inches or something. So if I open carry it by having the pie glove on there, it's totally legal. Absolutely not breaking any laws here by carrying this guy. I have carried it once so far. It's heavy. Uh, it weighs 14.8 ounces, if I didn't say that already. So it's almost a pound. But for this size, it's actually fine. I've carried knives that were like half this length, that were like 10 ounces. So that's actually not as heavy as you might think. Again, we don't have any steel liners other than what we have up here. I don't really know why. They put these liners in here again. It's not like the full surface of the knife is taken up by the liner. It's literally just pink up here. I don't know why, but yeah, it is what it is. I still think it's cool. Aesthetically, it looks sick. Really sweet. A lot of attention to detail right there. A nice work cutting it. It is rounded on the edges right here. It is very comfortable. You can see rounded edges. I love that big old bolster area right here. And so it's normal sized hardware too. We have a regular pivot screw and body screws right here. Same exact crap you see on the smaller knives. So you don't have to get special tools or anything. They just whoop, just maximize the size of everything except for the hardware, which is really funny, I think. So it's comfortable. We have a lot of different positions. You can hold it in extremely strong. The triad lock is a lock bar with a an integral stop pin. I would not take any other locking mechanism for a knife this size. It would just get dangerous at that point, I think. So I'm glad we got that on there, just like we do on most of the cold steels. Anything you'd use a sword or a machete for, that's pretty much what this is. It's a folding pocket machete. A folding pocket short sword. That's what's cool about it. It's a cool fondling knife. It's cool to have in the collection. And it's completely functional. Full on Sub-Zero quench, whatever they call that, heat treated, AUS 10A blade steel, 7.5 inches, triad lock, strong, dense G10 handle scales. So we have a really strong locking mechanism. You can wave this off of the pocket. It's very easy to wave this off of the pocket too. So unlike some of the other large cold seals that have the pocket clips so high up here, it's nice when this carries this way because it doesn't look like you have a massive knife. You know, it, this is a massive, massive knife. Again, going back and forth from holding this to this, it feels so small now. It feels like a tiny little compact folder in my hands. But going from that to that, the advantage to having a pot clip riding higher like this, not that this rides that high, but it's more covert. It doesn't look like you have a huge knife on you just by looking at this alone. But one of the downsides, especially for trying to wave the knife off your pocket using this, that's snagging it on the edge of your pocket with the thumb plate, I always wind up somewhere around this position in my hand. If I were waving it, I would imagine I was in a stressful situation where I had to deploy the blade as quickly as possible as I'm extracting it. Can't get much faster than that. But I'm in a kind of a piss poor position. You have to practice with it to scooch up on here and get in a good locked position so the knife will not fall or fly out of your hands as you're trying to deploy it again. Keep in mind, in a stressful situation. If you're in your room and you're practicing with it, that's one thing. But if you're actually in that situation, it might not end as well. And one of the things I actually like about the lower riding pocket clips, not that I necessarily like them all the time. Usually I don't. I like them just a little bit higher. But what I like about them for knives this size, when I deploy this out when I'm waving it without even, even trying, really, I wind up in this position naturally. As soon as I grip it out and I just drop my fingers down and clench, I'm right here locked in the lengthier position of the multiple positions you can carry this knife or hold this knife in. So if you're in a defensive situation or you needed to pull this out right now, you can just whip this thing out and it's very, very easy to grip onto it after deploying it. Be careful with it. It's razor, razor sharp. We have 7.5 inches of AUS 10A and it is ready to chop some crap in half. 
uh, lop some limbs off. It's it's re- it's not a joke. Be very careful with operating this blade. It, it's not to be messed with. But that being said, it is an absolute functional knife, a functional tool. Again, anything you use a machete for, big ass, <laughs> sort of like short sword. I should say it's it's literally it's not it's no joke. It, it's that very strong long knife probably the longest strongest production knife i should say in the world as of 2022 still no other knife company again is making even stuff this size with 5.5 inch blades six inch blades no way they're hard to find good quality ones anyway colts this is the biggest just the largest most insane quality folding knife in the world as of right now now if you get into customs you're talking about individuals making knives that's different i'm sure you can find stuff like this around probably for a grand or so probably more they're probably much much harder to find so production wise speaking of production knife companies this is the biggest folding knife in the world period it's going to be this guy I had, i've never seen anything this size or large it's the largest folding knife made by any company, and it performs very well, too. Very strong, very sharp. It's going to be literally the best defensive folding knife in the world. It's right here. If you need to defend your life, someone's running at you, and you're going to die if you don't do anything else, this is the best one. You can deploy it really quickly with the wave, get into a really tough grip, actually, really, really secure grip, and you have all this edge. One thrust, one slash, that's it. It's over. Very, very dangerous. Very, very powerful, effective weapon. Now... That being said, what are you going to use this knife for? What is its purpose? Uh, well, defense, again, it's designed to defend your life with. It's designed to be a folding machete, a folding short sword, a folding knife that you can bring into the jungle with you or in the wilderness, and you want to carry it in your pocket. You, maybe you don't want a big old sheath on you. You want something you can actually carry in your pocket, clipped, and you want the use of a machete. That's essentially what this guy is right here. Again, super strong locking mechanism, very effective, proven blade style right here. Good blade steel overall for the money. Good weight. It, it's not light, but it's not heavy for its size, believe it or not, being almost a pound. It's not even one pound, guys. Not even one pound for all this. But legally speaking, if you get in a defensive situation and you have to go to court, uh, your jury's probably going to look at you like you're a whack job if they see this. Like, why would you carry this knife on you? Now, unless maybe they know you're a knife collector, a knife enthusiast, and you can prove why you were lawfully defending yourself with this somehow. I, I don't really understand how the court works. A lot of it's a lot of BS, unfortunately. You could be completely lawfully defending yourself, not breaking any laws, doing the exact right thing, and still go to prison. Because your jury's like, that thing looks scary. And they completely ignore all the other facts that someone else is probably trying to murder you over something you didn't do, etc. And they may just ignore that because the knife looks scary. So legally speaking, that is unfortunate about this thing. It's unfortunate about the big knives. But effectively speaking, this is the best folding knife in the world to defend yourself with, period. No questions there. It deploys quickly, too, because of that wave. You pull it out of your pocket, you're going to be in this grip, and you look at all this reach you have. Even if they had, like, a baseball bat or something, it's all like folding knife versus baseball bat, what would win? Usually probably a baseball bat because you have the reach. But with this... I'd argue you'd win with this thing. Even if they smack you once or twice with that and it hurts like hell, you're probably still going to survive if they don't get you in too much of a solid spot. Again, it's one quick little swipe. It's going to be so painful. You're going to hack them. You're going to fillet them open, dudes. If you just touch them with this thing, it's, it's just... It's very, very scary. It's a very effective blade. And hey, let's say if there's no more laws anymore, the whole country and the world goes to crap... You would really want this knife on you. Like, if you're in, like, a Mad Max type of world or some post-apocalyptic thing, absolutely. Zombie apocalypse? This would be great to carry on you. If you just want something more compact for being so huge, it's not a compact knife by any means. But compared to fixed blades and fixed blades of this length, it is actually compact because you can fold it. So, as far as its uses go, it does have uses. It's a compact sword, but it's not very compact and it's not exactly comfortable to carry and use other than that for regular use it, it, it's just it's just too big but it's cool to have it's cool to fondle if you just want to keep it just for your collection it's absolutely awesome for that home defense knife probably they could do that you know if somebody was breaking into your house it'll probably hold up better in court as i'm a knife collector this was on me i had to defend my life they were trying to kill me and i just whipped this sucker out and i it probably hold up in court well for that, but I'm not a lawyer and I have never been to court, so I can't really tell you. But don't take my word for it. Don't say, hey, Maddox told me to get this knife and I just attacked somebody who was trying to attack me with this. 
and someone would may try to sue me for that. I, I'm not recommending it. I'm just trying to spitball some actual functional uses for a knife that looks so comically huge, because it is a comically huge knife. But it is useful. It has the potential to be a powerful tool, and it is actually. That's what's so cool about it. It is a useful tool despite looking like a joke. It is actually completely useful. So there you go. That is a review of the largest folding knife in the world. It's really impressive. And it's not too expensive either. Again, like 140, 150 bucks you can get these for. 140 is on the lower end. You gotta kinda look around for that. But 150 is about what you're gonna pay. Maybe, maybe 160. It's worth every penny. There's knives that are a quarter of this size that are more expensive than that because they have a nicer blade steel. But this is a very useful blade steel. Absolutely. AUS 10, hell yeah. It's great steel for the money. That's it. That is the Cold Steel Espada XL. Really cool. One of my favorite knives ever, just because of its its sheer novelty. I like it the whole knife in frame because I got to take a photo of it for the thumbnail, but it, it won't even fit. That's unfortunate. Well, there you go.